the other important topic that uh, we would like to look at before we go in if um, we go into weight uh, how to initialize weights is the learning rate decay. Again here um, the idea is because the uh, neural networks it is a very complicated function of the weights uh, it is very difficult to say when um, when we are near optimal uh, minima and when we are near some very uh, poor minima. So, uh, there must be some systematic way of uh, <coughs> changing your uh, changing your way uh, your learning rate this is basically your alpha that you are pretty much used to that is you must have seen x goes to x minus alpha delta l over delta x alpha, right. or in this case weights you are used to weights. So, u w minus alpha delta l over delta w right. So, this alpha ok. So, this alpha is in this many uh, what what people typically do is to vary this alpha with every iteration or epoch. So, what do you mean by epoch? Epoch is when you have gone through your entire data set, epoch is when you have gone through your entire data set once that is one epoch right. Let us say you are using stochastic gradient descent or mini batch gradient descent. You have to run through your entire data set and that will be considered as one epoch. So, from epoch to epoch you can vary your learning rate. This is important because that this learning rate will uh, will dictate how by how much you change your parameters by right because that the magnitude of the update also depends on not only on the gradient of the loss function with respect to the weights, but also also on the learning rate alpha. So, by um, modulating alpha you can you can um, also modulate um, the uh, magnitude of your updates ok. So, what happens is that when you have very high learning rates right. So, let us say alpha is very large number let us say close to 1 um, then you are uh, parameter values would vary rapidly ok, they would vary rapidly and by large amounts and would not settle down in a local minima. However, lower learning rate would lead to slow learning which means that they would not the parameters would not uh, change rapidly and it is quite possible that they can get stuck in some false minima ok. So, then there is good there is no good way to know when to do what, but typically there are the, the technique that people use is to decrease the learning rate as the number of e iterations or epochs increase. So, there are many ways to do that right. So, one of them would be to reduce the learning rate by a constant factor every epoch uh, or every every k epoch sorry this is a spelling mistake here or every k epochs. Hmm. So, this is again decided by you you have to again this is one consider this as another hyperparameter that you have to optimize right. Um, another way would be to check the valid. So, you have validation data and training data. So, you check the performance on the validation data and whenever the performance on the validation data improves you decline you decrease the learning rate by a certain fixed factor ok. What that factor is of course, has to be determined by trial and error or some uh, uh, systematic search that we saw earlier. Um, one of the um, more automated uh, ways are also to ensure a very a smooth decay. So, for instance, we in the previous techniques we saw you manually um, or not manually you set um, you decrease the learning rate by a fixed amount by a fixed factor every epoch. Here this is more a smooth way of uh, decreasing the learning rate right. So, that is that so this is your initial learning rate which you set again this is another hyper parameter that you have to figure out divided by 1 plus there is some decay rate times the epoch number ok. So, as the, as the number of epochs increase depending on the magnitude of the decay your initial learning rate will also decrease ok. This is a very smooth way of uh, decreasing your uh, learning rate. There are also exponential schemes for um, and uh, <coughs> decaying your learning rate. So, that is also possible uh, many of the software packages have these implemented as block boxes you are welcome to use of course, you should know what you are doing there is no reason why you are explaining this here ok. Um, the next topic is weight initialization ok. So, this is again a very um, important topic because um, if you do not initialize the weights properly then you would not get good convergence we will see why that happens. And then you have to keep you know trying out different starting points to 
uh, train your network again and again to and if to before you finally hit on something some initialization that actually works okay so why is this important because in a typical neural network there are large number of weights okay hundreds of thousands of uh, weights for a very small ann going up to millions and uh, millions of weights for large neural networks right so which leads to a large search space right so search space is because you have to look you have to minimize your loss function and the loss function is a function of your weights so it's a multi dimensional um, uh, problem that you're solving and so if you want to optimize that loss function then it's a very large search space of weights so you're looking for a common a combination of 100 million weights or more which will actually work and you want to affect you want the weights must be initialized randomly to effectively randomly to because to prevent convergence to false milliard and also to explore the entire space just as we saw as to how we have to pick your range of hyperparameters for uh, you know for hyper, hyperparameter optimization we also have to pick up we also have to figure out the range of weights that we have uh, uh, for the initialization in you know, so that the entire um, space of loss function is covered okay to some extent at least and that is that is required for an effective performance for a neural network so how is this typically done and what are the problems a yeah, naive initialization um, would involve sampling weights from a gaussian distribution or a uniform uh, random distribution with zero mean and unit variance right and so your distribution of weights for one weight let's say will or bunch of weights will look like this so this is a this is w and this is a probability of w okay typically this is a distribution from which you will pick right now um, we can do this but there are some problems associated with this and we'll see uh, what those problems are okay you assume that your input data x has also been normalized remember we normalized it Uh, that's core normalization to have it zero mean and unit standard deviation and we are also picking weights so that they have zero mean and so your weights wi have zero mean and unit variance your input features xi also have zero mean and unit variance right this we know we also assume that the x individual xi are independent wi are independent note that this night need not be a uh, this need not be x individual xi being independent need not be true and subsequently the the uh, wi also need not be independent especially in the case of images where there is structure but in most cases this is true okay so then uh, what happens so let's say we have one layer first input layer as uh, xi and we have uh, let's say m m features right so um, so your linear combination would would give rise to summation wi xi right summation 1 over m and the summation of this right so we just write this out um, so that will be so this let's call this output y right or actually i'll stick to notation and so z is so we will we'll ignore the bias okay w not that that is w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus so on and so forth plus wm xm m is the number of features it's talking about the first layer right so the variance of z it turns out under these assumptions that wi are independent xi are independent wi and xi are independent of each other it turns out that then variance of z would be m times the variance of w's and times the variance of xi okay that's what happens okay which is nothing but approximately so in this case uh, m okay so what does this mean so what is the implication so the implication is that if you randomly sample w's from a gaussian with zero mean and unit standard deviation and you do and of course you have normalized your features also to be that way then your variance on your sum that goes into the that z remember is the input to your uh sigmoid uh, your sigmoid function let's say let's consider a sigmoid function just for uh, um sake of argument m is the input to your sigmoid function 
then uh, what happens we saw that for large values of uh, of z which is possible right because the variance of uh, z is m times something so it can take very large values so in which case then the sigma would saturate so during back propagation the derivative would be zero and which means that the weights won't get updated so you're stuck okay so this is the problem with drawing from so but, but of course this uh, people have been doing this and so you'll have to do many trials and errors so that at some point you'll get one good combination which will give you let you do good back propagation so this is just looking at it from one uh, input uh, to a neuron right so what we have discussed is this is one neuron somewhere in the first layer and all of these weights these are the xi and these are the wi feeding into it also recall that there will be neurons going from outside of them also okay um so if you have and say in this case i have used m features because we am assuming i am at the input layer and typically we would say n in instead of m i will say n in which is basically the number of neuron number of weights that are feeding into or the number of neurons that are feeding into a, another neuron in the next next layer okay um another terminology is n out which is the number of neurons or the weights emanating from a neuron in a layer so that's you have to keep track of that so we have established that the variance of z which is a which is a lin um, z is a linear combination of the of the inputs to a neuron time multiplied by the weights so it's m times the uh, m it's pretty much m so it makes sense if we scale our choice of weights by m so the variance should be so when we try to sample we will sample from a uh, distribution with zero mean and variance 1 over m that makes sense so that's what people do okay so so the variance of w but from a previous slide, um, argument would be about 1 over in this n in i'd call it okay which is basically the number of neurons that are feeding into a particular neuron so from a previous layer okay so this is n in of course you know that the number of neurons also no not chart number of neurons number of uh, weights coming in which from the neurons in the previous layer and of course from each neuron you have inputs going to multiple neurons as output right so this this number of uh, outputs here we call n out okay now we have only looked at the forward pass in the previous uh, um, arguments you looked only at the forward pass and what happens now it turns out that if you consider the backward pass that is basically when you are doing back propagation and you want to preserve gradients then so then you have to keep track of when you have to consider this number also right because the gradients feed in to each of these neurons from n out number of neurons right so then um what this zeve initialization does uh, based on the author of the paper who proposed this uh, initialization is to make sure that the variance of w is the average of n in and n out so it's uh, is scaled by an average of n in and n out so which means that 2 over that okay this is the this is the solution they offer and it turns out that it works very well for a wide variety of problems okay so in both these arguments the idea is that when you have um, which consider the weights as independent and the features as independent turns out that the variance of the uh, linear combination of them um, scales as the number of them number of the weights or the number of neurons and to to uh, take that into account you scale the variance from which you scale the variance of the distribution from which you sample the weights by an appropriate factor okay so this uh, these are uh, commonly used in practice z variation is very commonly used in practice and so is this one the one over n in is also commonly used okay so both of them give very good results for um you know <coughs> convergence of a network very quickly so all of these how they help is that they they help fast training okay otherwise it will take forever to converge right because you have the saturation uh, then the gradient becomes zero because of the saturation and finally back prop doesn't update the weights as effectively and so the learning becomes very uh, very slow by doing this initialization we have uh, we'll have effective learning so uh, this ends our um, lecture on um, hyperparameter optimization uh, data normalization or scale data scaling as it's called as well as weight initialization okay 
uh, if you have questions please post them on the forum